building and enhancing the German-Ukrainian bilateral trade. We have two components. One is the policy advice for all stakeholders in the agriculture policy decision making process. And the other one is the capacity building for export oriented associations, but also helping German traders, German producers to find partners in the Ukrainian market. We've been doing so far almost 100 events in all over Ukraine and all the oblasts. So if you have any questions or need some context, please feel free um, to talk with us or our colleagues also from the German-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. For any um, yeah, requests, uh, you can contact us via the usual channels, meaning um, Facebook, um, email, of course, or our website, where you also always find current information about the agricultural process and what is going on in Ukraine. Um, we also distribute uh, for free a lot of information. So for all Ukrainian participants today, if you have any special um, needs regarding export um, to the German market or for German exporters to the Ukrainian market, you will find plenty of um, guidelines and further brochures on our website. So I'm wishing all of you a very interesting webinar. Um, I'm very happy that we have this cooperation today. And in case of any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact either German Agribusiness Alliance, the German-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, or our project Agritrade Ukraine. And now I give back the warm welcome. And uh, once again, thank you for organizing and having that webinar with us to Mr. Startmann. Yeah, thank you, Andre, for, for also explaining a little bit the background of uh, your project. I have to say for, for some observers maybe that joined the first time, sometimes it's not quite easy to understand what activities of the uh, German Agribusiness Alliance, your organization, how they fit together, what is the, uh, the common ground we are trying to develop, etc. But um, I think um, as we are a small circle, I think we will grow together and we'll drive this forward um, with, a, um, with a focus on winning mutually together with our Ukrainian counterparts. So be, before handing over the word to uh, uh, Alex Litsitsa um, on uh, his statement, representing, of course, very strongly the uh, agribusiness, the farming side in, in Ukraine, uh, leading the uh, president still the uh, uh, UCAP. Once again, I would like to uh, highlight that the conversation that we would like to have today is about putting ourselves into the uh, opportunity and the challenges of a, of a farmer, regardless of its size, that has now a unique opportunity over the next couple of years to uh, uh, acquire land. To, uh, to invest in hectares, while at the same time, there is a need not only to own the land, but also to, uh, of course, uh, be able to make other investments, be it in machinery, technology, be it in processing, be it in input material. So uh, there is a certain competition around the capital that is available. And of course, no surprise that we have today uh, the well-known and in Ukraine well-established banking partners in our um, conference that will highlight um, how they see their role and what is the, uh, the offers they can do. So just reading it maybe one more time to you, how can simultaneous investments both in land and agro technologies be achieved? What are the central questions for the, for the landowner? And how are the financial organizations preparing to serve, to support those farmers? And of course, and this will be, I think, a very interesting piece is what solutions will, for example, uh, Deutsche Bank, Raiffeisen Bank, Aval, and others be aware, uh, ready to, uh, to extend to the marketplace um, in order to overcome this kind of um, partially very positive opportunity, but also challenging environment. So with this long introduction, I hope uh, we have some clarity about where we want to go during our conversation today. I would like to uh, give the floor to uh, Alex Lissitzer, who will be sharing um, the view from a professional agribusiness perspective on the current situation. Alex, 
thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Dirk. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm I'm very happy actually to be here with you today, and I have a short speech about the current developments in Ukraine. So as you know, last year, the Ukrainian parliament has uh, passed a law about the land market and uh, the land market reform uh, has been expected in the country for many years. And we are really happy that uh, in few months, as an exact date uh, from the 1st of July, the land reform will start. And very important point is also that yesterday, the Ukrainian parliament has passed another one, very important law for the land reform, which is very complex, uh, but in, uh, in, in general is actually uh, finalizes all the needed issues to start the land reform. Like for example, yesterday was passed the law where is exactly say what happens with the state land, and, and what kind of procedure is to give the state land from the government to the local communities is clearly uh, clearly legalized the position of the current land operators. So without the permission of the current land operator, for example, it's not possible to sell the land, et cetera. So that means that we do expect the land reform starting from the 1st July of 2021. That's the first stage where the Ukrainian citizens legally can buy the land and sell as well. So and the second stage will start in 2024 from the 1st January where the legal entities, Ukrainian legal entities can buy up to 10,000 hectares of land. So what we actually expect of the next two years in Ukraine? Not that much because uh, we have done many service and uh, agriculture companies and currently uh, looks like uh, up to 3% of the land owners are ready to sell the land. So that means that will be not a big demand and will be not a big, uh, uh, not a big uh, uh, number of the land plots on the market. So uh, we do expect that the real land market will be starting from the first July from the first January of 2024. And that means also that the agriculture companies will be uh, will be looking for the additional financial resources starting from the first January of 2024. So uh, I do not expect a huge uh, huge uh, number of transactions over the next two, three years. Honest to say. So when we when we actually talking about the investments in agriculture, then the last year was for the Ukrainian farmers very good, and 2021 I expect to be even better. Looking on the prices for their main commodities, and that means that the Ukrainian farmers will achieve very good financial results, and that will be also reflected in the number of uh, the investments. We do expect that the Ukrainian farmers will increase the investment about 30% in 2021 in agriculture machinery as well, but not only. So if we do speak with, uh, with uh, uh, agri machinery producers right now, they are very happy about the market in Ukraine because the Ukrainian farmers are investing and uh, we do expect that they will invest even more. So that means uh, that times are quite good for the Ukrainian farmers, but also for their financial institutions, because I think they have also chance right now to uh, increase the financing of the agriculture producers in the country here. So uh, I think I think we do expect very interesting times in Ukraine, uh, and uh, I do expect a jump in the GDP of agriculture. I do expect the jump of investments in the irrigation system. I do expect actually jump in the in, in interesting projects uh, in rural areas, but it will be not from yesterday to today that will take a little bit more time. So that means uh, I think that the process of the land reform, which will start in a few months, will take at least 10 years when the fields will be consolidated. So that means, uh, once again, thank you very much for the organizing that event. Uh, I'm very pleased to say a few words uh, as a keynote speech, and I do expect today a very nice and interesting conversation about the land market. Uh, about the financing instruments and, of course, about the machinery market. So thank you very much, uh, uh, all the organizers. Thank you very much, Dirk, for a nice introduction and uh, have a nice, uh, nice event today. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for your um, 
statement, which I think uh, for unless I have a very different view than all the other participants, very promising. But what I'm also uh, deriving out of your statement is that the, the land market is maybe not, or the developing slowly starting uh, land market is not the biggest engine of um, the current upswing in the agribusiness. It is this uh, 2020, 21, which allows the farmers to make uh, significant investments and maybe this will unload some of the stress uh, because there's a good income um, and uh, maybe even make the challenge to buy land over time and make other investments simultaneously um, more digestible for the farmers. So I think overall that sounds like good news and of course one could now say so why do we need the banks basically if they have such a great income but of course there's more than one side to the coin. And maybe that leads us over to um, the next statement and um, the comments from uh, Ben Woods, um, taking a stand for Deutsche Bank uh, in our call this morning to, to uh, share his view and the view of course of his organization. So Ben, if I may ask you for your comments, thank you. Yes, good morning my dear participants. Um, well, just allow me a, a little trip back in times into the history in order to understand where we are right now today. So I keep it brief, so don't worry, because uh, that the uh, major facts are already well known. So looking back into the Ukrainian banking system back about 10 years ago means pre-Maidan, we had roughly 187 banks in the market. Um, I, I dare to say the majority of these banks were either a special purpose vehicle or a special or, or um, can, let's say bank for certain uh, groups of interest. Um, the, under the uh, previous government of Poroshenko, the, the national bank delivered a marvelous job in, in cleaning up the market of, uh, of the banks. Uh, did major steps forward in order to create uh, um, a functional, a sustainable um, financial market with all the measures they implemented over the past years. So now we are down to from 187 to roughly 60 banks. Um, that shows how um, deep the measures of National Bank went over the past years. And um, that, on the other hand, created a very sustainable financial Ukrainian market in terms of financing and in terms of uh, managing the uh, FX rate, what is indirectly related, of course, to the investments of the farmers as well, because usually machinery is bought outside Ukraine. Um, and uh, this, basically uh, was done by a national bank that was independent and very transparent in terms of creating an environment um, for the financial market to be sustainable towards external influence and impact on the market. We have a pretty good example starting last year with the pandemic. Um, we had some little hiccups in the FX market where um, the rates were going up slightly, but uh, then basically back to normal within the standard volatility of the FX market and the seasonability of, of that uh, area of banking. And we had a very interesting move in terms of the interest environment, because last year within three months, we went down from a double digit um, interest interest reference rate from beyond 10% down to six and a half to six. Now we are back to seven and a half. That's a tribute to the current um, uh, still Corona crisis and uh, the inflation tendency in the market. But nevertheless, that shows that National Bank delivered a very good um, and sustainable financial environment um, for the market and, of course, for the banks, where banks are able to finance the economy. That's basically the, the topic we have here. Um, the money is there. It's not a question of money uh, because the liquidity is available. 
and banks in principle are set to, to finance investment projects. Um, the issue still, and I think here the colleagues, let's say up to a major extent will um, more or less confirm, um, for the banks is still pretty tricky uh, in legal terms because we still do not have the necessary legal environment in order to uh, um, do a financing in accordance to the, the, let's say, international banking standards, so the legal uncertainty. And um, another point is also the, the, the court system, as long as you are able to somehow influence court decisions, well, it's questionable whether banks are able to to uh, um, finance sustainably based on, on collateral um, economic activities. And these are basically the major drivers. Going to the land reform, um, well, Alex already touched it briefly. Um, it's, it's still in development. So land as a collateral, as used in the, let's say, old economies. Yeah, that's very nice to have and going forward, I'm quite sure that this will be a huge opportunity for um, the, uh, uh, let's say, investors, as well as also for banks in order to create the respective business environment. Are we there already? No, we aren't, um, because Again, internationals are still excluded from buying land. Uh, it's not clear where, uh, what, what kind of assessment basis means price banks can use in order to assess and evaluate the value of, of land that is uh, offered for collateral because there is no market as of yet. So that's a pretty tricky question for banks in order to, to enter into negotiations. But and here I'm then referring to my colleagues um, from Raiffeisen and Cordial to Gold, but um, we have already functional um, mechanics and, and suite of products that is um, supporting the agri industry uh, in their investments, except the ESA covered financing where um, uh, exporters respectively importers can utilize the coverage of uh, export coverage agencies sitting in the countries of the exporter. Um, we have also local instruments that could be used in order to uh, um, financially or, or yeah, support with credits the investments into machinery uh, or even with working capital facilities into the um, daily operations of the respective of the respective enterprises. Um, I, I dare to say at the current point of time, the financial industry is set to finance and support the development of the Ukrainian economy. Definitely, I'm reiterating, liquidity is there, um, the will is there, what is quite important, there are only some facets that needs to be cured. Um, now we need to pave the grounds in order to, to implement that. And uh, we should start with the, the products we have already. And uh, if there are no further questions, I did hand back to Dirk, respectively to Yuri, in order to elaborate a bit more in detail about the capabilities and uh, the opportunities that can that banks can offer uh, in terms of the financing of the industries. Thank you, Ben, for for your input to the uh, to our common topic today. What what I take out of your statement is that um, the banking sector, including Deutsche Bank, is well aware about the opportunity. There are some maturing issues, so that let's say that the real value of the uh, land is still to be defined in a stabilizing market. And as you rightfully said, uh, land serving as a collateral 
is still something that needs to be put into the right legal framework where also ownership questions and all this is then um, kind of waterproof going forward so that this becomes more of a technical mechanism as opposed to a, a very sophisticated project uh, for every credit or leasing application that would be uh, uh, would have to be approved. Yep, that's a nice summary. Yeah. Um, maybe one thing, and we had it in a different Ukraine um, conversation, uh, agriculture is somewhere in the neighborhood of 13, maybe 14, and maybe with an increasing balance, uh, soon 15% of the GDP. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it accounted for about 40% of Ukrainian export. So I think this number is even more I would say uh, impressive. I think we had it at the German-Ukrainian forum, I think, um, led by uh, um, Mrs. Merkel, where we had also our agribusiness panel. So this is something we always need um, to keep in mind, that the agribusiness is a very strong pillar of the Ukrainian economy. So having uh, had the input of uh, Bernd from Deutsche Bank, I would like to uh, give the floor to Yuri Vasilenko, who is head of leasing at Credit Agricole. And very happy maybe to get your, I would say, uh, solution view on how you will be able to uh, maybe uh, support the farming community uh, going forward. Hello to everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm very glad to be present on uh, this webinar. Uh, first time in... Uh, organization uh, a bit more deeper about financial instruments our bank uh, launched financial leasing uh, at the mid of last year in order to extend uh, the possibilities and to support our clients and new clients of course uh, to additional financial instrument uh, where as a bank all leasing companies doesn't matter uh, a bit more comfortable to provide the financing because uh, the LC is the owner of the leasing object. And uh, with this topic, uh, the decision taken is much for faster. Uh, the financial organization is more uh, comfortable to provide this because if any uh, potential uh, problem or arguments for leasing object, it can be can be easily in the back or repossessed. But this is another topic. Uh, I, I want to emphasize that uh, during the last 15 years, what was not changed, uh, the leasing law. And uh, finally, uh, at the current February, 4th of February, was uh, by parliament was approved uh, the new, new law financial leasing. Uh, and this is the big uh, result of actually uh, the association of leasing and uh, the participants who are working on the working group together with the people of deputies. And it will allow the financial institutions and additionally to the clients to be more safety when they con conclude the leasing agreement uh, to involve suppliers as a third party also of, as of leasing deals, etc. So this is a very progressive uh, new law, which will be in, po in power from 13th of, uh, of June. So we expect that, yes, it can, can be possibilities additional to grow the leasing, uh, the leasing in Ukraine. Uh, according to the new law, uh, unfortunately, the land cannot be the leasing object. Uh, we try to convince the people deputies, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the land cannot be. But, uh, of course, we are glad to finance uh, the normal leasing object on wheels uh, or, uh, or, or leasing object with which can be moved or easily moved and to support, uh, to support economy and the clients in order to free their working capital. Uh, additionally, uh, how we can support uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, uh, there is available the program, the EU for Business uh, is a European Union program, which can provide additional compensation for the end customer, about 10% from the finance amount. 
And for example, our bank is a part of this program from the last week. And actually, um, we are very glad to support uh, our clients with such initiative. And we believe it will uh, really help uh, the end customer. Uh, what are the requirements for, for the borrowers and leases? Uh, it's the general requirements uh, which, uh, which we are currently working. So it cannot be the own uh, state-owned company. Uh, yes, we are working with uh, private, uh, private, uh, private uh, founded capital. Uh, business activity, um, we prefer that agriculture companies uh, have two business cycles. Uh, in order to show the ability to uh, to show the result uh, and uh, that uh, they are uh, manage uh, they manage the business, the minimum uh, land bank uh, should start from two hundred hectares. But for leasing, uh, we are a bit softer. We can. Uh, Propose financing for the small farmers for, for 50 hectares, for example. We are re really flexible on this approach for leasing and uh, really much more comfortable to work even with the small and medium enterprises. Uh, related to the lending criteria, which is uh, actually uh, our bank provide uh, from the beginning uh, and uh, the portfolio of our. our uh, Credits is about fifty percent of whole of whole bank portfolio. It's maximum tenor of sixty months. Repay, repayment schedule minimum two two per year, uh, and as well the bank is very flexible and can shift the payment schedule to the farmers or clients need because yes. Uh, any farmers or clients have uh, own uh, payment calendar and uh, yes we want that our partners uh, will be uh, comfortable with our with payments to us the interest rates starting uh, from 11 12 uh, uh, percent per annum but generally we can propose um, very attractive uh, interest rates because we have the agreement with the producers. It's agreements which uh, aim to support our customers with the lower rates. And yes, uh, it's uh, some subsidized from, uh, from the, directly from the plant. And we as well participated to provide not so, so high uh, margins, uh, you know, the, our financing will be attractive. So it's not only to earn money, but as well to support. Related to the leasing, uh, we ask about some advance payment, 50% uh, because we become the owner and yes, we have to be at least on the safety side and we require 50% of advance payment as well at me, uh, as a minimum two repayments of body per year. It allows us to be on the safe side and very comfortable to provide this financing. The interest rates uh, very close to uh, the same like in uh, in lending. Uh, leasing gen generally the product which can be much more faster with the decision taking. This is why sometimes uh, it costs a bit, really a bit, uh, a bit uh, more, but it's not really something uh, unusual on, on the market. It's about 11, 10, 12, percent per annum. And we don't need uh, additional collateral and it allows uh, as well customers to be much more uh, much more interested in this product because no need additional activities to be provided. No collateral, just leasing object and that's all. And list of documents in order not to overload our customers to preparation of the documents. We need simple documents, it's balances, Form one and two, profit and loss report. And as I mentioned before, two years uh, results of, uh, of activities. Sometimes it needs uh, additional uh, agriculture forms, it's 50 SG, called 50 SG, and uh, additional explanation from the customer because 
uh, sometimes uh, um, we see in reporting uh, that activity is not profitable, but um, mainly it can be created by the credit from headquarters and uh, a fixed rate changes. But we are as well, uh, if it can be explained, we really can accept this explanation from the client and provide the financing. So this is the general general rules which we are uh, which we apply to the financing. Uh, want to emphasize that yes, it's not only about earning money, but as well we are uh, really want to support uh, support our customers, uh, our, our potential customers, and uh, uh, really uh, like we agreed with uh, European Bank uh, Reconstruction in development, uh, where they provide us uh, the credit line of 25 million euros for participation in, uh, in the program from EU uh, to support uh, small and medium enterprises. It's not a matter of liquidity. This is a matter of supporting and uh, really to be the agent of uh, the European Union and to provide, to provide real not expensive uh, financing and uh, support directly from European Union. This is what I want to deliver. Uh, if anybody have any questions, we'll be happy to answer. Thank you, Yuri, for um, your detailed, I would say, summary of what uh, Credit Agricole is doing today. I think with your mother company being very well established in Western Europe, I think this European spirit, I think, is um, is pretty visible as well, and I think you are well recognized over many years as a main player. And I have to say, this fifty percent portfolio in the agribusiness is quite um, uh, impressive. I would allow myself, and of course, everybody in the call uh, can ask questions either in the chat or raising the virtual hand. Uh, you write two two things come to my mind. Um, as a matter of um, attitude, um, farmers used to be very conservative. They used to like to own the equipment in the past. So to be uh, the real owner and say, this is my combine, my tractor, uh, while being in a leasing scheme, of course, um, formally you hold the equipment, but the owner is the leasing company. So that would be my First question, but I have a second one. Um, are you seeing a shift in mindset, uh, potentially that um, this uh, ownership feeling is either the same or is getting smaller or it's more about finding a solution than owning? And then secondly, I think it would be interested also to learn, we heard from Alex and the overall news as well, that there is a kind of a very positive development in the market. Would you see a different confidence level of your clients in going maybe in foreign currency, in euro or dollar leasing? Uh, or is there still um, a preference, for example, for Ukrainian Griff now? So that would be the two things. That, that come to my mind as uh, you made your comments. Thank you very much. Uh, very good uh, and actually very interesting questions. Abs you're absolutely right that uh, the attitude, uh, especially in Ukraine or post-Soviet countries, is that better to own uh, the asset uh, versus to rent. Abs you're absolutely right. But what we see first, uh, Depends on which KPIs have the CFO or management of the companies. Because uh, yes, because it's, if you are owned, of course, it's your current assets and it's reflected uh, you know, on uh, on your balance sheet. Uh, if it's operational leasing, it's just rent. For sure, it's not your current assets, and this is a separate KPIs which can be as well applied. Um, to, to the reporting. This is the first. Second, for sure, uh, the changing of mind, which is it better to own, uh, it is absolutely true. But what we see that if we, as an international company with a huge history, more than 100 years, 
for sure, and great reputation, we see that clients more likely to work with us as well for leasing. And uh, yes, we are starting not, not so far, but we see that uh, 70% of financed uh, already deals, it's a new clients. Well, what, it, what it means? It means that uh, the new clients, no, not the current clients, coming to us because they trust that nothing uh, bad will happen if we are even uh, on, only provide financing and we be only owner. So they expect our good attitude because we are financial institution with a great compliance uh, who respect uh, the all business norms, etc. Because yes, you you are really right that on the market uh, it happens uh, real situation when, for example, we we can understand the client to make restructuring uh, to give them a hand in order to not to rep rep repossess the asset uh, because we have actually the rights because currently. Uh, according to the current law, it's 30 days after the uh, leasing company or the bank who provide uh, financing and leasing can start the repossession process. In the new law, it will, it will be 60 days when the co leasing company or financial institution can come uh, for repossession. And this improvement will ensure uh, the client to be on a bit safety side because at least two months they will have additional opportunity firstly or to uh, to pay uh, the due payments or to agree uh, with the financial institution the restructuring etc so in this case uh, we believe it will help um, to change a bit uh, a bit the mind but from my point of view the, the best approach the best programmatic approach yes is provide the good uh, financial financial rates, financial conditions uh, to, to the customer, to be honest uh, to, to the customer, because as well, we see sometimes that uh, on the market, some players uh, can uh, not to be real, uh, real crystal clear, I would say. Yeah? Uh, and we recommend to our clients to, to check the general payment which they will pay at the end of the of the leasing. So this the, the main topic which the customers have to, have to see not the rates, not the advance payment, etc. The what they want to see the last total which it will be cost for them at the end. This is the main point because the leasing payment consists from the Different, uh, different, different points. It's the payment of the body. It's the payment of uh, of the interest rate. It's insurance. It's additional expenses which can be lead to the financial leasing, and all this included in the leasing payment. And for example, uh, the inter interest rate can be even five percent, but insurance can be as well seven or eight. And this is not right. This is why we decided, uh, and this is from, from the beginning of uh, the leasing activities and the bank attitude uh, in generally, that yes, we will be as much as possible crystal clear in order to provide the clear financing, uh, you know, the, our customers back to us, even without, uh, without uh, our approach to them. And we see this, we see, that the clients who try to work with us back to us and ask about additional financial. And this is not, not only agriculture equipment as well, the cars, because the car fleet usually in agriculture is quite, quite big. And uh, the payment for cars as well big, because uh, if you will own, for example, you buy a car, you have to pay a pension fund. It's from, for example, 5% from the purchase price. It's a huge money. But we can include this uh, into the leasing payment agreement as well as insurance. And it's a huge economy. It's a, it's a free the working capital which can be used, for example, for land buying. And we see that interest uh, for, for leasing increasing uh, month by month.
For example, last year, uh, the general amount of fin finance in Ukraine is 56 billion grivnas. Uh, actually, it was first time calculated by National Bank because from the July, the leasing company is well under the umbrella of National Bank. And this is the first time when it was calculated because as well banks come to the leasing market and I expect that uh, banks will come more and more uh, to this market because uh, no need uh, to solve uh, the liquidity topic when it's your subsidiary, for example, leasing company, you have to finance, you, you have to find the resources, etc. And I believe the banks will come more and more. If to compare with us, yes, we decided uh, to start from the bank uh, balance, but we have the huge support from uh, Paris, from Credit Recoleasing and Factoring in, in, in France. And actually, yes, if the market will be grown, I think it can be supported as well. And uh, pro probably one more player can be visible on our market. And yes, the huge story of uh, of our organization shows that yes the good reputation can create the new business and change the mind of potential clients this is why we believe that uh, the mind of our clients can be changed as well and the leasing will be growed as well uh, related to the second question related to positive development i absolutely agree uh, because the leasing show um, pro progression year by year, and the, if to compare, if I'm not mistaken, it's a 23% growing uh, to compare the year by year. It's uh, the date for, for the last year. And we see that uh, from the starting, uh, because we have a pilot phase last six months, even during uh, these six months, we are not do any advertising campaign and the client uh, tell to each other after the, the one deal and client come to us, uh, how to say, uh, hand, hands by hands uh, that recommend us. And me, meaning that leasing is uh, it's a really pop, popular product and it will be growing, I, I'm sure it will be growing. Related to a fix and green financing, uh, very actually sensitive topic because currently we provide only green financing in leasing. Uh, for lending, it's uh, possible as well as fix uh, financing if the company has export opportunities, etc. But as well, grain uh, generally related to a fix because if you uh, you are even not export uh, the grain. Anyway, it's uh, linked to a fix uh, because of uh, world market. In leasing, we provide green financing. We consider that um, it as well can be considered by the client as a sum hedge because we provide the fixed uh, interest rate for the whole leasing period. For one, mm -hmm. one to five years, it's real fix, real without changes. And... To compare the, the volatility of a fix in Ukraine can be really huge. We see as well some potential in this uh, in this case because, for example, if we have the common program with uh, some producers, it can be uh, the fixed rate uh, rate in Grivna even for four or five uh, per, per percent in, in Grivna. So it's not not so huge. And for five years, it as well can be very attractive. In this case, uh, yes, we see that it's really positive development. Related to a fixed financing as well, uh, I want to state that leasing uh, in, in, uh, on the Ukraine leasing market mainly linked to a fix. It's about 85 to 90%. And for this, uh, for this case, yes, uh, we as well want to finance uh, in a fix, uh, but currently this product under development, we believe it can be solved, but it's not so easy for the banks. And uh, we are on the, uh, some dialogue with National Bank in order to rightly come to the market uh, with a product for a fix. 
but uh, currently it's available from the leasing companies uh, and we believe uh, as well it's a good instrument uh, a fixed leasing or uh, link to a fix in order to provide the right not so costly financing to the end customer so i agree that the positive development will 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 follow this year in spite of uh, quarantine and uh, lockdown in spite of this we see the activities and i believe it will be as well in the future the one more topic we have not only ukraine but as well in the whole whole world is semiconductor uh, semiconductor crisis but i believe my colleague vasily from class can give us more interesting detail on this but the main problem is uh, my colleague uh, from deutsche bank as well said not not the money we have money and liquidity the current problem is ukraine that not enough uh, tractors combines and uh, the assets which need uh, which need semiconductor because currently it's a main problem and not only for this as well for cars. Mm. Those this is two questions what I want to answer. Many thanks, Yuri. I think uh, very good insights and uh, helping us to understand um, where the market is trending to. Um, I really took from your statement the word transparency and the kind of no surprise policy for the uh, customer. So that Absolutely. is the kind of a hidden, a hidden issue in a, in a nicely uh, dressed up package. So um, I think this, this uh, indicates that um, the, uh, the confidence building that uh, your organization, other very reputed organizations have done in the local market, um, which I think is, is really um, good and um, trying to help uh, making investments affordable while you still need and want to be profitable as a finance institution um, i think it's a very good way um, forward but i think also the change from i want to own to be driven by kpis i think this is also uh, something that that shows us that the uh, the market is maturing and what we understood is however that the land reform as such currently is not really impacting um, your business significantly. It is more the lack of um, chips that are used in uh, in uh, modern uh, machines, for example, that you cannot get enough Currently, yes. assets to uh, to be bought through the market. So I'm sure uh, Vasily will give us a good explanation. And I see also some other colleagues here on the call who are from the manufacturers who who certainly can also speak up if they like to uh, when we have our Q and A session. So um, we would come now to Sergei Wojtov, so Raiffeisen Bank Aval. So we basically have a third um, member of the finance world uh, sharing his view. And uh, Sergei would be pleased to, um, to ask you to take the lead here for the, for the last um, statement from the banking side before we then uh, will uh, hand over the word to Vasily Sider from uh, class. Who will share then his view on the uh, on the manufacturer side? So thank Sergei, you, the stage is yours. Yes, uh, thank you, Dirk. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Good morning, partners. Uh, first of all, I want to thank organizers for this ability to participate in such a great event. Um, and uh, my uh, presentation today will be quite simple. I want to show several slides. I will share my screen. Uh, I will start with a bit uh, kind of macro analysis of current liquidity and banking system and don't then go on to the uh, financial instruments, the, the overview of financial instruments, which are quite classical, which are quite well known to the customers, but uh, uh, which should be overviewed a bit to understand what uh, the uh, clients may, may uh, obtain today. Let me share my screen. Do we see it? Yes, perfectly. Perfect. Super. Uh, so, yeah. please, you may see on this slide the uh, your liquidity dynamics and banking system, and you see that currently and there are a lot of money, a lot of green liquidity in the banking system uh, about. 
200 billion UR. Uh, most of it are invested in NBU uh, certificate of deposit and also are on the balances of correspondent accounts of, of the banks. Uh, that uh, basically means that banks have a lot of resources to finance the, the economy, to finance the agribusiness and uh, uh, agro clients. And uh, on the next slide, you see the uh, inflation dynamics, and we see that uh, inflation rise to, uh, during the last several months, and uh, a national bank reacted by increase of key policy rate. Uh, for 1.5 percent starting from from March, um, but still there is a lot of liquidity in banking system, and uh, in fact the banks are looking for good clients to invest their liquidity. Uh, quite uh, the same situation as you know is with uh, hard currencies because banks have a lot of uh, amounts of hard currency on their balance sheet, uh, and even considering the uh, negative interest rates of current accounts on euro in the euro zone, zone banks even uh, obtain losses so they're more um, interested to invest this free liquidity in the market than in just to have it on the, on the balance sheet and uh, basically from from this point of view uh, agro business is kind of uh, sector which is very important and very interesting to the banks and uh, banks uh, investing in this business uh, a lot starting from 2010-2009 and on this slide you may see the that crop production uh, in Ukraine during these years is growing growing and growing and the banks going wider to the sector for example today Refresen Bank of Wild has about 40 percent of uh, total credit portfolio allocated to agribusiness and uh, other banks and as uh, previous speakers said that Credit Agricole has 50% other banks are also very interested in this sector. Um, basically uh, the, uh, it is very interesting to the bank to have uh, the uh, land market reform uh, because there are still several issues on, on the market on financing of agribusiness. And the first is, as Ben say, said, is uh, the uh, legal environment. And the second one is kind of collateral issue because uh, many of uh, agro producers do not have enough collateral to be financed. Uh, and uh, land is very um, good kind of collateral that may be uh, used by the banks in the future, but still, uh, we I agree with Alex that uh, Ukrainian land market and, uh, will actively start from 2024, when legal entities will be allowed to purchase some land. Uh, there is a quick kind of quick overview of financial instruments that, uh, which is available for agro customers. And uh, also I will try to overview them and uh, provide some hints about each of type of these instruments, which may help to potential clients to apply to the, to the banks and understand these instrument, instruments more. Uh, I will start with operational financing, uh, which is used to cover cash gaps and to finance working capital requirements of the companies. Uh, the first time of operational financing is overdraft facility. Uh, which is um, quite good instruments because it may be quite fast allocated. A lot of banks have kind of fast line to, to sign these overdraft facilities. You need only have account on the bank and have some flows through the banks. And uh, then um, just five, seven days and you are able to take this instrument. Uh, another benefit of these instruments is that it may be blank, so formalized without any collateral. Uh, but uh, in Ukraine, when we talk about overdraft, uh, you have some uh, such kind of uh, issue that it should be monthly or quarterly zeroed, and uh, it's uh, not very uh, not very very good for agribusiness because agribusiness has. Uh, a kind of longer credit cycle. Uh, so it may be used, but fragmentary, let me say. The second kind of instrument is working capital facilities, most commonly used by 
agrarians, and it is well known to agrarians and presented by most of banks. Uh, with these instruments, uh, there is a collateral issue, as we say, set uh, because uh, uh, some agro clients have lack of fixed assets to be provided in collateral. Uh, but uh, banks uh, used uh, some special uh, kind of uh, instruments, financial instruments, which are called pre-crop and post-harvest financing. Uh, they are able to uh, take uh, some future crops uh, in uh, in pledge with some some ratios, some current ratios and discounts, and also uh, the double warehouse certificates when we talk about harvest on the silo complex. So in general, it's worked like this. And for multinational clients, you're also able to provide some corporate guarantee in case it is a really international client, it may solve the collateral issue for the client. Um, the second type of interest in is promissory notes available. Uh, and it is interest, interesting instrument. It may be used to pay for the uh, agro inputs for the crop protections for the fertilizers and so on. And uh, uh, when you talk about this instrument, I advise the clients to talk with the financial banks and ask about the partnership programs because uh, a lot of banks have some partnerships with suppliers of crop protection for suppliers of agro inputs and it may uh, really reduce the interest rates because it is subsidized uh, by the producer, subsidized by the supplier and also by the bank. Um, so uh, it is about finance, operational financing, talking about CapEx financing. Uh, as of today, the uh, financing of land is not available purchase of land is not available, but still there are a lot of instruments to finance the uh, purchase of equipment or some investments uh, for agribusiness. The first one is the uh, standard investment facility, uh, which uh, banks may allocate to the client and which may be used to purchase some techniques or equipment and so on. And uh, for this type of facility, I also recommend to check for partnership programs because a lot of banks have partnerships with uh, techniques, suppliers, and they, uh, they uh, provide a, a space to reduce the interest rate to make more uh, reasonable condition to the clients. Uh, for this type of financing, you uh, need the long-term forecast. Uh, the banks will ask this long-term forecast for the type of time of financing. Uh, then another instrument uh, that I want to overview is uh, Export uh, Credit Agency Finance Backs Financing. It is an interesting instrument. You know that uh, a lot of uh, countries have an export uh, credit agencies which uh, help them to support their exports. And these agencies uh, have limits to Ukraine. They are able to provide guarantees in case of guarantees to cover bank financing. In case uh, the clients wants to purchase the uh, big portion of uh, kind of equipment or techniques from some producer, they may refer to this instrument. Uh, but I want to say that uh, this flies with quite uh, rather big tickets. Uh, for most banks, is uh, from five million dollars. For for a thousand bank, it's a bit less. It's about two million dollars. And it's kind of cross-border deal uh, when uh, money, in fact, provided outside of Ukraine. Uh, another instrument I wanted to overview is uh, leasing, but I will not stop a lot on this instrument because we have had a very good speech from the previous speaker, Uncle uh, Diagricol. And uh, to sum up kind of my presentation, I want to say that uh, of course, both uh, banking sector and agribusiness are uh, looking forward to land reform, finalization of land reform in 2024. Uh, but uh, before this, we have a lot of financial instruments available to the clients and uh, both parties are interested to increase the, this kind of financing and portfolios. And I advise uh, you to uh, I advise the client to go to the banker and ask some 
consultation, which financial instrument better to take, better to choose. And uh, I think that will help. Uh, so basically, uh, that's all. Thank you one more time for this ability to speak. And uh, also, uh, also I want to uh, say, I want to advise happy Easter holidays, Orthodox Easter holidays who, who is celebrated them. Thank you, Dirk. I am ready to answer the questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Sergei, and uh, I have to say the um, your presentation, the input of Yuri and Band, they um, they really show a um, I would say almost complete picture of what is available today. And I don't want to draw an early conclusion. We are we still have um, some time before the end of our uh, conference today. Dick, may looks... I just may I just sneak in because I was waiting till my colleagues were finished. I uh, thought it's part of the presentation as well. Just a little remark. Uh, in addition to the to the products already presented by by the uh, colleagues of uh, Raiffeisen and Kvadierke Kohl, what each um, aqua company needs to take into consideration are also the so-called trade flows. So that means um, uh, the the uh, uh, financial flows in hopefully cross border because that could be taken as a security for financing as well, means the purchases to their off takers, even in advance. These, is, these are the so-called pre-export finance facilities based on existing contracts. So that could be quite useful for a uh, uh, product or, or vehicle for financing the uh, uh, working capital or even the inventory as well, in addition to the uh, lease options and all the local uh, credit uh, product that are offered by uh, the colleagues uh, here in the presentation. Ben, thank you very much. I think it's a very valuable remark that um, basically with an advanced contract, because you have sold X hundred or thousand tons of grain or corn uh, to, to a trader, maybe in the, the Western world or somewhere, and you have a already confirmed income that this can be part of the evaluation process, basically, uh, when you want to make investments uh, in country. Yeah. Um, now we have heard um, the, um, the input, the voices of um, three finance institutions. So we, uh, we have uh, listened to the supply side and looks like um, there is liquidity, maybe even more than actually needed for the, the reasons we understood, some shortage in supply, but um, also maybe a competitive market. Um, maybe now a very good time to jump over to Vasily, who represents the, uh, the manufacturer side here and maybe can, can uh, showcase a little bit how a major player in the agricultural machinery market, how um, his organization, but also his customers are looking at the current financing situation and how they deal with it. And maybe also this is a platform on leaving some, some requests, some wishes with the banks and leasing companies that are here today. So Vasily, the stage is yours. Yes, thank you, dear um, colleagues. I really appreciate the opportunity to present um, in such expert group and um, I have to mention that I am newcomer in your group. I would say um, I'm since um, six months um, responsible for the class Ukraine uh, company. And um, I would like to share with you um, our experience, yes, how it works uh, between supplier and, um, and the financial solution in the Ukrainian market. I will share the presentation with you in just a moment, please. Colleagues, do you see my presentation? Yes. Um, as I understood, you are quite experienced um, in, um, in the agriculture business. However, I will provide um, some information about our company. It's still in family business. Um, we have a turnover of 4 billion in 2020. And um, we realize um, above 80% 
um, our goods to, to export. Yes, and in class we have uh, circa 11,395 employees in 2020. Um, so what, what, what we are offering is, yes, um, it's clear combine harvester, forage harvester, tractors, balers, telecopic loaders, wheel loaders, service and parts. And of course, one of the important uh, product is today um, the digital solutions. Um, um, arc market tendency in Ukraine, what we observe. Um, the ag sector selects Western brand agri-technologies. As you mentioned, colleagues, the trend is uh, clear. Arc markets request more attractive finance solution. Yes, it's asking for lending and leasing. Arc markets request more trade in. Um, for class sales, we cover it by 55% um, in 2020 by, by finance solution. So if we compare, so for 20, 2014, we had just 15% um, of sales, which um, were covered by, by, by finance solution. So this is a clear trend and the, the customers um, are asking for, for finance solutions. Um, we as class cooperate um, with different international banks. Um, for example, OTB leasing, Rife, Eisenbank, Aval, ProCredit, Credit Agricole, and others. So if the customer wants or brings his, um, his finance solution, so we are also able to, 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 to provide um, from our side the needed support. Um, all details about the finance solution the customer can find um, on our home page um, now we spoke about the local solution we also as class are able to provide export finance solution for example for fleet customer yeah, covered by ACAs so it depends on um, what kind of solution the customer wants so we are able to provide the right one so key points um, for efficient finance solution in our business of Ukrainian market. Uh, what, what, what we recognize that the competence of the bank of the banks in the agri technologies is quite important. As you mentioned colleagues, um, it's important to precise approach of the risk assessment. Um, so because this agriculture sector or the agriculture is business is um, quite difficult. Yes, our customer has um, to invest a lot of uh, money, yeah, borrow the land, invest in the agriculture equipment, seeding materials and so on and so on. And um, it takes time until he gets his revenue back. So yes, so our approach should be to provide solutions. Yes, we as supplier provide the technologies the busy customer is able to, to um, make his business, but it's um, quite important, of course, for the customer to compete on, for Ukraine customer, I mean, to compete on the um, worldwide um, range, I would say it's, it's quite important um, to have the right financial solution. And so when we speak today about 6.57% uh, of interest rate, yes, so it's, um, it's quite good, I would say, when we compare to the to, to, to the last years. Mm, however, I think there is um, a lot um, room for improvement, and that's why what we recognize these banks, which which have um, departments which um, concentrated on 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 ag business here. Yeah? So these banks understand more the risk and the risk assessment the right risk assessment leads to the to the lower interest rate. So what we are also recognize is the competence of the bank in the trading. So the customer, the Ukra uh, Ukrainian customer ask more and more for, for trade in. So um, Ukraine is quite close to Germany. Yes, and um, it's um, not nothing new for 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 uh, Ukraine customer to 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 observe the market um, abroad and um, yeah to to request also solutions like trade in um, so efficient in process of decision making what what we are also recognize that we have to be more efficient in decision making processes so um, because 
is that sometimes recognize, especially for example, in COVID-19 situation, so that the banks, some banks have, uh, have switched quite uh, fast and optimized the processes. And um, other banks had some, some, some difficulties to adapt. However, I think, I think here it's, it's quite important also for us as an agriculture business, the efficiency in the processes. Um, digital solutions are requested from supplier, banks, and leasing companies. As you mentioned, uh, Dirk, I think one of the components uh, for the risk assessment is, of course, this digital solution as we as supplier provide already. Um, our machines are already full transparency, and these machines are able to communicate data yes and um, i think i think it will provide also more transparency to 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 the to, to the banks um and enable enable um the right risk assessment so colleagues thank you for your attention from my side if you have a question please proceed Thank you very much, Vasily. I think for for sharing the uh, the view of um, the class organization, the its dealers and the the customers. Um, maybe one one question that comes to my mind before we then also open up um, for the uh, for the participants for the question and answer session, of course, is if you would have this one single famous wish for your customers. Um, towards the financing institutions, what would be your top priority request? I mean, you have alluded at some of the critical success factors already in your slides, but the question is, what would be the game changer that you would want to see happening that, um, that the agribusiness will be even stronger supported than uh, what we see already today? It's uh, difficult to answer because, um, as uh, colleagues already mentioned, yes, so there are some factors which um, influence um, the, 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 the agriculture sector sustainable environment for, for banks, yes, legal uncertainty, land reforms. Um, I think. Um, I think it's 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 our challenge yeah, to bring all these um, aspects um, or to consider all these aspects and to find to find the right solution for for our customers mm -hmm. and okay. provide to our customers the possibility to be um, how to say more effective and um, to provide the profit the with our customer, our Ukraine customer is able to invest and increase his abilities. What I what I take out of your comment is that the overall responsiveness in between the stakeholders, so the customer, maybe the manufacturer, maybe the financing institution can further increase and the faster we can obtain data, the faster we can manage data and conclude uh, results, um, the more successful uh, we can be all together. So that means that speed in the um, approval or application process is critical, speed in maybe of the customer to provide um, data to the finance institution is critical so that, uh, for example, in case of leasing, that people know where the machine is located, maybe how many hours it has accumulated so that there is a certain protection also of the asset. So there is different ways how to look at it, but it, it looks like from all what you have shared and what we have heard that by every time we increase transparency, um, we have a chance to, to be more efficient, basically uh, uh, amongst the people that, that have this joint project. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Good. Um, Vasily, if you could kindly close your presentation, because oh, then we have course. a chance to see each other a little bit more. And not okay. only this nice combine, <laughs> which of course we all like. Huh? Yes, of course. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think we are doing 
fairly well. I think it's uh, 11, 20, 20, 20. We are really uh, uh, close to, to our schedule. So now it's the, the chance, I would say, for all those who have been listening carefully and maybe digested some of the rich information that has been provided uh, also to present uh, their questions or comments. And um, for those who rather prefer to do it in the chat, this is of course also possible, but of course always nice to have a direct interaction. And what I would like to, to offer, um, and uh, I didn't talk to Andre Pilling about it, but I know with Peer this is a very common practice. Whenever you have an issue later on and you would like to get in touch with us or using us as a kind of a, a pivoting point, as a connect connection hub, then please let us know because this will not be the last time we will come together. This is an ongoing, I would say, uh, topic, the Ukraine agribusiness. And so um, we would like to keep the uh, communication going as required by all those uh, who have joined us today. So. Please, Peer, you have a question, but hopefully more people even. I just wanted to appreciate uh, mentioning that we will be uh, in, in touch also in the, in the, in the upcoming uh, weeks and months, uh, of course. Um, yes, I have a question um, to Mr. Vasilenko. Um, as I just read, the, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development um, has offered a loan of 25 million euros to Credit Agricole. Does that mean um, uh, increased or let's say even better conditions uh, for, for farmers in Ukraine also in the very near future when it comes to, um, to, to lending here, to financing here? Yes, absolutely. Uh, because with this uh, credit line, additional uh, advantages for the end customers and farmers that the European Union and European Union donors uh, can provide up to 10% of subsid subsidizing uh, calculated from the finance amount, meaning that uh, if in leasing we will finance uh, the combine with advance payment of 20%, so the cash back uh, will be considered from the finance amount is 80% uh, from financing. And uh, yes, it should be uh, as well aligned with uh, eligible assets, which can be financed uh, because, yes, it's related to the green uh, taxonomy uh, because this is one, one point uh, from this agreement that, yes, we have to aim to finance uh, the, the ec ecological green assets, but the new combines and tractors uh, as well covered and actually, uh, we already have uh, approved deal uh, from the BRD consultants for, for the some assets. And yes, it, it shows that uh, it uh, brings some advantages for end, uh, end customer, for sure. Okay. And, uh, and for sure. the idea is, yes, as I told before, the bank has a lot of extra liquidity. But we step in into this program, you know, the first it's uh, boom boost uh, for the leasing product. The second, uh, for sure, we will provide our help uh, because we are not only the bank, we are a consultant because we have the own department which related to the agribusiness. It's a separate people daily dedicated for agribusiness who goes to the farmer directly each day of the year. More and over, we have the agro school uh, and our clients as well participated in this uh, in these classes, you know, they firstly to bring uh, their expertise to our people as well. And uh, yes, we believe that we bring not just financial solution, but as well some advantages uh, for end customer and for farmers. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think a very, a very good point, good question. Anyone else? Um, please, Sergey. Yeah, uh, maybe it's a question to uh, Vasily or but um, to, to another colleagues. Uh, how do you think how old uh, is now is the combined park or park of combines used by uh, or using now uh, by farmers? 
uh, which should be replaced uh, through new uh, agrotechnical equipment in percentage, for example. Um, I think it's a quite interesting uh, question. And um, to be honest, it's qu quite difficult to answer because, for example, when we speak about, about the combined market for Ukraine, so um, the combined market in Ukraine, we are split into a new one and a uh, used one. So, and when we speak about 500 new ones, so at the same time comes in nearly um, 500 of, of, of used ones. So um, what, what we can say is that um, the, the usage of the combine in, in Ukraine is um, much longer um, as, um, as, as, as in Europe. Yes, so um, we have customers uh, which use um, leasing programs. And on the same time, we have quite conservative customers which buys um, the machines by themselves and they use the machines uh, up to 10 years now. Okay, thank you. I can add, uh, if you allow me, so generally by, by statistic, it's only combines. The general Z uh, which used uh, in the companies. So by the data which uh, the leasing market have uh, in Ukraine, it's about uh, only uh, from three to four percent uh, using uh, through leasing. Meaning that the, all the rest, as Vasily says, the own, uh, owned and uh, pro probably the bigger part of this is old, uh, old techniques. And in this case, uh, we believe that we can uh, run and to reach uh, the 20, 30 percent, uh, uh, the part uh, which actually um, related to the leasing in Europe or developed countries. So it means that we have a really uh, good possibility absolutely. to grow, yeah? Yes, absolutely. Because now in Ukraine, three, four percent, but in nor normal developed countries, about 20 to 30 percent through leasing, which uh, changed uh, for new equipment year by year. Thank you. Yuri, I like your definition, normal countries. <laughs> yes, because we are, still on is, really. <laughs> we are still on development, real under development. We are, we are like startup. Even <laughs> we, are, we are 25 years, but still, yeah. we are too young. Yeah. Yes. I, have, I have two questions that uh, are popping up in the chat. And one is from Lesia Kravchuk. Uh, for those who are in the leasing business today, are you considering to get started with operational lease? Question mark. And if yes, by when? And um, uh, and then there is um, there's another question from uh, Natalia Krasichin. With many financial institutions in the markets lending to ag customers, what competitive advantages? Should financial institutions possess to win the egg customer? Is it speed, price, expertise, or other? So I would say, if unless there are more questions coming up, um, because we are now hitting our planned end, but of course, if you are willing to stay on, I think we can use a couple of more minutes. So operational lease, when will it be, uh, um, let's say, marketable if it's coming? And then, um, what are the, uh, the key competitive edges that um, the leasing companies would like to, uh, to present themselves with? So for operational leasing, uh, if you allow, I will try to answer. So if we are talking about uh, Credit Agricole, this product under development, and we see that, yes, it's a big opportunity as well especially from the big agriculturists, uh, because we have some requests from them as well. Uh, we not uh, consider the small farmers will be interested in operational leasing, but the big agriculturists uh, uh, really ask about this. And generally, yes, it's a good product with a high residual value, which allows uh, to the companies not pay so much, but real to use uh, this equipment like a rented car, for example, where everything included into the leasing payment. 
the service, uh, insurance, additional ex expenses, etc. And yes, uh, for the companies, it can bring some advantages as well because uh, no need uh, after the lease period to sell this equipment to to trade in, etc. It's uh, just back to the leasing company and to renew the fleet of tractors or combines. So we believe as well it can be popular and it's already uh, already starting to, to be popular in Ukraine. And we believe as well we can provide in a few months, as, uh, maybe till of uh, uh, the end of year, some solution for operational leasing. But for financial institution, it's not really so easy for the operational leasing because it's more complicated product we have to compare with financial leasing when it's related more uh, to financing. Because uh, for operational leasing, financial institutions have to conclude buyback agreement, for example, with, uh, with a dealer or representative. Uh, because yes, the financial institution have to be on the safe side because it cannot be uh, sold easily 20, 50, or what, whatever the numbers of combines. This is why it's a bit more complicated product. But we see the potential, for sure it will be developed because it's some demand already exists on the market. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to comment? Otherwise... Um... Uh, this Derek comment the question about the competitive advantages. Yeah. You know, it's a very good question because I you know and there are a lot of banks which uh, provide pretty the same, quite the same kind of services. And uh, for me, I think that is uh, quite important uh, competitive advantages is uh, the ability to build the long-term strategy relationship between, between bank and the customer to support uh, the customers through the uh, different stages of growth. In, you know, in bad weather conditions, in good weather conditions to be with customer and to understand the customer and uh, it is uh, what is uh, really matters for customer. Uh, another question is that uh, for uh, agribusiness, especially for kind of farmers, it is still quite important uh, how far the bank branch is from, <laughs> from the customer. In, still in our digital world for the agro business, it is quite important. Uh, so the number of branches is also matters. And uh, also I see the question about the uh, when uh, Raiffeisen will what, back. What did you pick it up the, yourself? <laughs> to, to, to the leasing uh, market. Uh, you know, Raiffeisen has a uh, good leasing franchise in uh, other geographies. Uh, but in Ukraine, uh, we do not plan to develop this type of product uh, as of now. Maybe in future it will change, but I, I may not say when. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So my interpretation very subjective is you see it's an attractive field you cannot change history but there might be a comeback one day maybe yeah okay so are there more questions and the problem is that we don't see everybody on one page but i think on the second page i don't there is one more in the uh, in the chat when agrarian receipts could be used as financial tool I don't know, Bant, is that something that um, that you want to take? I would not know exactly where to place the question. Yeah, that's basically the prom notes uh, uh, yeah. financing. That's a, a quite, I would say, or oh, dare to say in the meantime, a quite standard product within the market. So that that's actually nothing new. So banks are offering that. Um, the only thing you have to do is basically get in touch with the relationship manager, discuss the, the, the topic and the, find the respective solution. Again, that's, that's uh, already an offered um, alternative in the uh, financing market. Okay, so you're saying it's already existing, it's a question how it's applied. Uh, and yes, and, and how the, basically that's also individual to the respective banks, how the bank is offering uh, uh, the product in, in their own structure. Hmm. Okay, thank you. We have another question and I think it's really great to, to see this activity level. 
think it's from a company in Pöttinger, Mr. Hautzinger. So um, it's about the, um, the smaller farms, which only in Ukrainian terms are small, up to 1,000 hectares, not in Western terms. Um, what are the, um, the expected impacts for um, the smaller farms uh, having access to financing with the land reform taking place? So basically, if you ask it the other way around, um, how will the credit worthiness of the, uh, the smaller farms uh, develop if they own more their own land? Uh, so this this is how I take this um, question because we know that uh, there is a certain part of the farmers which is pretty significant that maybe has not the right financial documentation that banks like to receive for the evaluation process, be it loan or leasing. And um, here the, the question is, is there a quick win to be expected or is it something that um, when we go back to the initial statements that land market will probably only speed up by 2024. Is that something that will simply take another three, four years? Uh, or can we expect something maybe more in the shorter term that those smaller farms get an improved access? And here it would be, I think, to either Sergei Band or Yuri. Um, if if they see a correlation immediately or um, if yes, we don't... allow me here a quick statement. Mm -hmm. uh, from my point of view, it will still take some time. How long? I have not the slightest clue because that's completely subject to the decisions in the Rada and how the current um, proposals and suggestions are integrated into a new law means then the further implementation. Um, so it's hard to assess whether it's next year or in four years, taking into, into account the current resistance in the RADA regarding the, the, the topics around the land reform. I personally assume it's rather a little longer than, than on short term. But Sergey, I interrupted you, sorry for that. Yes, basically, thank you, Bernd, and I generally, I agree with Bernd, uh, that is, it will take some additional time, uh, but I also wanted to emphasize that uh, it is important uh, not only orient on collateral side, on land as collateral, it is also uh, important to, to develop uh, the accuracy of financing for such types of farmers, for such types of companies, and to, to, to develop uh, this, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, these companies become uh, more good as uh, borrowers. Uh. Yeah, I, I think a very uh, good and I guess also valid point, the qualification and uh, uh, of the customers. Yes. And I think here we probably also get back to the word transparency, moving into a more professional uh, bookkeeping, accounting, um, financial data provision, etc. So I think all processes that we have seen in, in other economies too, where, uh, for example, and I don't want to compare, I'm just saying when you go to a Western European agricultural machinery dealer, basically you decide for the product and at the dealership, you will still sign the application on, uh, on a pre-screening, et cetera. And it's just a formal process. It's not a lengthy evaluation because the financials and the data of the customer are in place. Uh, so it's a very common practice. Um, we are now 10 minutes over. We have probably five more to stay polite for everybody's lunch break and uh, calendar. Any more questions that um, we should be picking up? Did we have another question in the chat uh, by Mrs. Rusishian? Um, yeah. I think we had it already answered in the um, about the competitiveness, where um, I think uh, Sergey 
pointed out, it's the long-term relationship uh, accompanying the customer through the different cycles of growth and development, and maybe a little bit like in a marriage, in good and in not so good times, huh? to uh, to stick together and prove a real partnership. At least this is what I took out of the uh, um, the answer. And of course, there is in the other presentations we heard about speed. Um, certainly is critical and developing a certain expertise also what I think uh, Vasily um, shared uh, in the analysis, the intelligence of an individual farming operation by the bank. Yeah. So um, I would, I would um, move on and would like to um, conclude our today's session. First of all, I would I'd like to say it was really interesting to see that the number of participants increased over time. Yeah, <laughs> very often you have a one hour, one and a half hour conference and you will see people um, may leave early uh, for, for whatever reason. But I think here we have had a really, I would say not burning topic, but a highly critical topic for the success of uh, Ukrainian um, farming and agribusiness. And uh, like, like everybody is told in life, building on a given strength. And I think this is what Ukraine is doing well. And when you look at the, uh, the export quotes, when you look at um, the role that uh, Ukraine as a worldwide commodity producer is playing, it's, it's really getting um, um, exciting for all the people in and not only because agriculture is system relevant and we are in a COVID scenario where agriculture fortunately has kept the flag really up and it's, uh, it's doing very well. We are even partially talking about a boom. Um, it's great to be in this business. And I think we have a homework list of fine tuning our common activities between the, the banking institutions, the machinery suppliers, the manufacturers, but always with a focus on the customers, of course. And um, what we understood is there's enough capital, there's maybe even a little bit more capital than what is needed currently by the customers. There is rather um, a certain shortage of supply of assets, so of machinery that, that could be financed. So this is on the homework list of the manufacturers to make sure that this, uh, this gap is being closed. But that uh, overall the outlook, um, coming back to the initial question, opportunities and threats because of the land reform and the maybe conflicting interests of investments for the farmers is not really that big. Yeah? There is certainly some priority decisions to be made, but my understanding is that whoever has a sound financial situation is not forced to do one or the other only, but there is par parallel moving forward is possible. And um, I would say um, with this, I would like to uh, thank all the speakers for their presentations. I think which were really uh, sharing good of news. And if you if you're willing to share your presentations with uh, with Andre and Peer, then we can make sure that the participants they can also use that um, documentation later on, and uh, we will be looking very much forward to having you back in one of our conferences, ideally also face to face. And um, thanks for the uh, uh, teamwork with our partners getting this set up, but. Thank you very much for your attendance, for your interest, for your questions, and um, have a good, hopefully, lunch break now, but have a good Easter weekend in Ukraine coming up, which this year is really almost a month later than the, the Eastern we celebrated, but still, I think you're a little bit closer in spring now, so maybe a good time to appreciate. So all the very best. Thank you so much, and take care, and see you soon again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.